The most perfect and finest objects ever issued from the hand of man. Developed over the last 7,000 years, urushi, or Japanese lacquer, is a craft in which time moves very slowly. Working with unlikely materials, viscous sap, powdered metals, bits of shell, the lacquer artist completes his work only after months or even years of patient labor. When you hold a piece of lacquer, you may only see its intricate design on the surface, its skin. But beneath the skin, there is flesh, and beneath the flesh, there is bone. actually the sap of a tree, is gathered in much the same way as latex from a rubber tree. Diagonal notches are cut into the bark and the sap is collected into containers. A single mature tree may produce less than half a cup of sap each season and then must not be tapped again for a few years. So precious is this resource that at various times in Japanese history, the cultivation of lacquer trees has been a matter of law. One distinctive drawback of raw lacquer is that it contains a toxic substance which can cause severe skin irritation. The tree, Rus viniciflua, is a close relative to Rus diversiloba, known in the West as poison oak. Lacquer craftsmen must expose themselves to the leaves little by little in order to build up an immunity. Once properly hardened, Lacquer produces a lustrous and extremely durable coating resistant to moisture, heat, salts, and even mild acids and alkalis. Unlike any other substance, lacquer can be painted, carved, and molded, lending itself to a wide range of artistic expression. Japanese culture makes great use of wood, not only for architecture, but also for sculpture and for innumerable objects of everyday use. So it is fitting that wood is the material most commonly used for the base or inner core of lacquerware. The woods, zelkova, cherry, pine, and Japanese cypress, are selected after careful scrutiny and then allowed to dry for as long as seven years to assure that they will never warp. I use only the driest cores in my work. If I were to use uncured cores and the lacquer would begin cracking in 50 years, I would not be able to rest in peace in my grave. The kijishi, or core maker, turns circular pieces on his lathe, working with progressively finer tools until the base is only one or two millimeters thick. The core maker's final step is to sand the base even thinner until finally light can be seen coming through the wood. The nushi, 
or lacquerer, begins by sealing the wooden core with a coat of uncolored lacquer. After that coat is dried, lacquer mixed with fine clay is painted on to fill in the grain and leave a smooth surface. Sometimes a layer of fabric is used as reinforcement. In all, more than 20 more coats of lacquer will go on. 10 mixed with clay, one of pure clear lacquer, four mixed with fine earth or ash, and finally, four or five of colored lacquer. If the lacquer is applied too thickly, the surface will harden, but underneath it will remain liquid, so it must be painted on in very thin coats. The lacquer will not dry if the air is dry. The air must be wet, then the lacquer will dry. When lacquer hardens, it is not drying in the conventional sense, but more precisely, curing due to a chemical reaction that takes place best in moist air, about 85% relative humidity. Raw lacquer contains the enzyme lacase, which acts as a catalyst for its oxidation and results in a permanent hardening of the viscous raw material. The freshly lacquered objects are placed in a tightly closed cabinet called a furo that can be dampened with water to maintain the proper humidity. After each coat, the lacquer must be carefully polished by hand. At first, the worker may use a pumice stone to take down irregularities, and then finer abrasives like charcoal to make the surface absolutely smooth. We should not be called lacquer makers. We should be called polishers, since that is what we spend most of our time doing. A finely lacquered object may have more than 30 coats applied and polished over a period of several months, even years. It is impossible to hold a lacquer piece and not feel the sensuous curvature of its shape, the glassy smoothness of its surface. Made by hand, lacquer is meant for the hand and cannot be fully appreciated by the eye alone. When a piece is finally ready for decoration, the lacquer artist draws the design on a piece of thin paper and applies iron red lacquer to the lines. This pattern is then pressed against the lacquer object and rubbed from behind. The transferred design is retraced in red painting lacquer with an animal hair brush. Next, gold and silver powders are sprinkled on the sticky lacquer through a screen on the end of a bamboo tube. It is this process that gives the technique its name, maquillé or sprinkled design.
Left in a furo for 12 hours, the lacquer hardens, trapping the powders in the patterns of the drawing. Usually, a final overcoat of clear lacquer is applied to protect the design. This is polished with fine mineral powders, bone dust, or charcoal until the surface reaches a brilliant luster. There are hundreds of different techniques for decorating lacquer. In Marquier alone, at least three major types can be distinguished. Hira Marquier, or flat sprinkled design, where the sprinkled pattern is lacquered and polished repeatedly. Taka Marquier, or relief sprinkled design, in which sections are built up with a mixture of lacquer and powdered charcoal to create three-dimensional images. And the most complex, togedashi maki, or polished out sprinkle design, where the pattern is coated with layers of black lacquer and then polished until the design reappears. There are other methods such as urushi, painting the design directly in lacquer, raden, using mother of pearl inlaid into the surface, and chinkin, where gold leaf is laid into incised designs. Behind the visual richness lie countless hours of the lacquer craftsman's intense labor, the training of eye and hand, the cultivation of imagination, total devotion to detail, and ultimately, patience. My name is not important. The craftsman should not stand before the work or even beside the work. He should be behind the work, invisible. I would die and turn to dust. The lacquer will remain. <laughs>